Sometimes we don't realize just how magnificent our planet is or how many things are happening on and around it. Some phenomena go unnoticed or are completely unknown to us, even though they might have a direct impact on our lives. Moreover, new events are being discovered every day, adding to what is already being studied, generating a massive amount of information that simply doesn't reach everyone. But that's why we're here. In today's video, we'll discuss some recent events that could potentially change the course of our history. We'll talk about a mega tsunami that caused seismic disturbances around the globe, a mini moon that will orbit the Earth in the coming months, a new Japanese supercomputer that will be a thousand times more powerful than the most advanced machine we've created so far, and a newly discovered ecosystem in a mountain range deep in the ocean that revealed at least 20 previously unknown species. Why none of this has received the attention and coverage it deserves, I can't say, but that's about to change. Discover now the incredible things happening around the world that no one is talking about. Mega Tsunami in the Arctic Let's start with the Mega Tsunami. The event occurred in September of last year, but we only recently discovered it was actually a tsunami. And it wasn't just any giant wave, it was one of the largest in recorded history, reaching at least 200 meters, tall enough to cover the Great Pyramids of Giza. But how did such an event go unnoticed for so long? Well, it wasn't exactly unnoticed. Let me explain. On September 16, 2023, seismographs around the world picked up a very unusual vibration. A seismograph is an instrument used to measure ground movements, especially those caused by earthquakes, which are the result of tectonic plates shifting. Normally, seismic signals are strong and sudden, showing up as sharp spikes in the readings and quickly passing, serving as a warning. By the time these signals are picked up, the tectonic shift has already occurred, leaving only enough time to alert people to seek shelter. However, in many cases, that window of time is too short to act. In contrast, the signal recorded in September was completely different. Instead of sharp jolts, the instruments detected a steady, monotonous hum that persisted for nine days, a phenomenon completely unprecedented, as noted by Stephen Hicks, a seismologist at University College London and co-author of a study published in Science on the case. Initially, no one was sure what was happening, and many believed their equipment was malfunctioning, as a typical earthquake of this magnitude would have devastated the planet. Yet, when seismologists worldwide reported similar readings, it became clear we were witnessing a previously unknown phenomenon. Early investigations indicated that the vibrations were coming from eastern Greenland, but it took time to determine exactly what had happened. It took the collaboration of 68 scientists from 15 countries and 21 different institutions, working for a full year, to uncover the truth. The result was staggering and, unsurprisingly, linked to the impact of human actions on our environment. For years, a glacier situated at the base of a 1,200-meter-high mountain above the Dixon Fjord in the Arctic had been thinning due to rising global temperatures. As the glacier melted, the mountain above became increasingly unstable as it relied on the glacier for support. On the fateful day of September 16, 2023, the glacier collapsed, causing an enormous mass of ice and rock to crash into the water, generating enough force to fill around 10,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The result? A colossal wave over 200 meters high, one of the largest ever recorded. But why didn't anyone see this, and why didn't it cause widespread destruction, as we've seen with other tsunamis? There are two main reasons. First, the area where the tsunami occurred is extremely remote, so the wave only reached an abandoned military base and a site with possible remnants of ancient civilizations, with no one being directly affected. The second and most important factor involves the unique geological conditions of the region. The glacier was located at the base of a mountain that rises above the Dixon Fjord, a long, narrow inlet surrounded by steep cliffs, typical in the northern hemisphere. The wave generated by the glacier's collapse was trapped within this fjord, bouncing back and forth in 90-second intervals. This is known as a seiche, which refers to the rhythmic movement of water within a confined space. This phenomenon can be replicated on a smaller scale, like in a glass or bathtub, but the power of this mega tsunami was so immense that it caused the entire Earth to tremble for over a week. Scientists had never observed a seiche lasting this long, making it a particularly difficult event to study. 
This event has sparked a new paradigm for concerns related to climate change. We already know that the planet is heating up, leading to more frequent and intense storms, prolonged droughts, rising sea levels, and increased solar radiation exposure, not to mention the devastating impacts on ecosystems as species struggle to adapt to these changes. Now, we're faced with a new possibility. Other tsunamis have been triggered by glacier collapses, like the one in Greenland in June 2017. These massive waves have the potential to cause destruction similar to tsunamis caused by underwater earthquakes, such as the devastating ones in Japan. But what's alarming is that these impacts could be so powerful that they trigger tremors across the globe. A larger wave could break off an even bigger chunk of a glacier and possibly, though minimally, alter the Earth's rotation and tilt. All of this will require further study, as this is still a very recent discovery. However, if we don't shift our focus towards sustainable initiatives soon, it might already be too late. Temporary Mini Moon Now let's talk about 2024 PT5, the temporary mini moon that Earth will have for the next two months. Don't worry, this won't be like a second sun disrupting planetary orbits. While rare, this phenomenon is already known to us and poses no threat to our existence. A moon, or natural satellite, is a celestial object that forms naturally in orbits a larger planet. The most familiar example is, of course, our own moon, but there are other famous ones, such as Europa, one of Jupiter's 79 moons, where ice has been found and which may even have a climate similar to Antarctica, according to some predictions. 2024 PT5 was first detected on August 7 by the Atlas system, a network of telescopes around the world scanning the sky for potential threats. Interestingly, during initial investigations, scientists thought it might be a piece of space debris, possibly a fragment of a spacecraft or satellite that broke off and drifted into space. This is far more common than you might think. However, after analyzing all known human-made objects that could fit the observed pattern, researchers ruled out that possibility. The object turned out to be spherical and about 10 meters in length. This sparked some unusual theories. Some people speculated that the object might be alien space junk, left behind by an extraterrestrial civilization. Strange, right? It's not exactly how we imagine confirming the existence of intelligent life, by spotting their discarded trash floating in space. Still, in these kinds of investigations, all possibilities must be considered, no matter how odd they seem. In the end, the explanation was much simpler and more realistic. 2024 PT5, our temporary mini-moon, is an asteroid from the Arjuna asteroid belt, which typically orbits the Sun. Due to slight variations in the Sun's gravitational field, the asteroid was pulled out of its usual orbit and captured by Earth's gravity. It's expected to stay with us until the end of November. In fact, it won't even complete a full orbit around Earth, it will follow a horseshoe-shaped trajectory. The last time something like this happened was in 2020 with 2020 CD3, which stayed with Earth for a few months before drifting away. Similar events occurred in 2006 and 1992, and likely many other times when our instruments weren't advanced enough to detect these close approaches. These types of asteroids are very small on a cosmic scale. For us, 10 meters is the size of a bus or truck, but in the vastness of the cosmos, it's practically insignificant, especially considering how far it is from Earth. Observing it would be like trying to see a needle from the other side of the world with a magnifying glass. So, no, you won't be able to see this second moon with binoculars or amateur telescopes. Only professional, high-tech equipment, like the large telescope in Sunderland, South Africa, can spot it. After it drifts away, Influenced by the gravitational pull of other celestial bodies, our mini-moon is expected to return. When? In 2055. By then, who knows? Maybe we'll have smaller, more accessible devices to observe it. Fugaku Next, Japan's supercomputer. We might get a helping hand from Fugaku Next, the supercomputer Japan plans to start building in 2025. 
This initiative was announced by the country's Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, which aims to invest 107 billion yen, roughly $750 million, in the new system. The promise is that this supercomputer will usher in the Zeta class of global computing, meaning it will be capable of performing operations at the scale of Zeta flops. Flops, or floating point operations per second, measure how fast a supercomputer can solve complex calculations. In this case, Fugaku Next will be able to process one sextillion operations per second. You might be wondering what that really means. To give you an idea, a sextillion is 10 raised to the 21st power, that's the number one followed by 21 zeros. To put it in perspective, it's estimated that there are around 100 billion planets in the Milky Way, which is 400,000 times smaller than a sextillion. Current theory suggests there are about 70 sextillion stars in the universe, which Fugaku Next could theoretically compute in just over a minute, if, of course, all those stars could be observed by our instruments. This isn't Japan's first venture into supercomputing. In 2005, Riken and Fujitsu, the same companies behind this new project, created the original Fugaku, which was the world's most powerful supercomputer until 2022. It was built across 400 racks and integrated roughly 150,000 CPUs, delivering an unprecedented level of processing power at the time. In 2022, the U.S. took the lead with Frontier, a supercomputer capable of reaching 1.2 exaflops, making it the fastest currently. However, Fugaku Next, the successor, is expected to operate at a minimum of one zetaflop, making it a thousand times more powerful than its current rival. What impact will this have on us? It's difficult to predict, but we do know that this new generation of supercomputers will likely work closely with artificial intelligence. This suggests we're moving toward developing general AI, an entity capable of controlling most of our electronic systems. Fugaku Next's immense computational power will also be used for running complex models of the universe, potentially identifying future habitable planets, aiding in the search for intelligent extraterrestrial life, and advancing our understanding of physics, astronomy, and cosmology. Additionally, Japan plans to leverage this supercomputer to boost scientific research across all fields, particularly in medicine and pharmacology, which could significantly advance treatments in the coming years. However, there are challenges to overcome before the 2030 delivery of Fugaku Next. One major challenge is funding. While we know that technology is one of the most heavily invested sectors today, securing billions in funding is always difficult, especially if political support isn't in place. Japan is currently focused on preparing for potential threats from China, Russia, North Korea, or their allies, which is consuming a large portion of its resources. The second major challenge is energy. A supercomputer of this scale is expected to consume 21 gigawatts, equivalent to the energy produced by 21 conventional nuclear power plants, a staggering amount. How Japan will resolve this issue, and what environmental impacts might arise, remains to be seen. The Underwater Mountain Range Last, but certainly not least, let's explore some fascinating discoveries made 1,400 kilometers off the coast of Chile. In this area lies an underwater mountain range, very similar to the Andes, which stretches from Patagonia to the Caribbean coast. However, this range is much smaller and completely submerged in the Pacific Ocean. Named the Ginesa Range, it extends from this region near Chile all the way to Easter Island, home to the mysterious Moai statues, over 900 enigmatic humanoid figures. Among these underwater mountains, one stands out a peak towering at least 3,000 meters tall. This is higher than Mount Olympus in Greece and nearly the same size as one of the world's most famous volcanoes, Mount Fuji in Japan. The discovery of this underwater range was made by the Schmidt Ocean Institute, a non-profit organization dedicated to marine exploration. The researchers used sonar technology mounted beneath a ship to map the ocean floor. Upon finding this unusual formation, they deployed an ROV, remotely operated vehicle, to investigate further, and the results were astonishing. The team documented a ghostly white octopus known as Casper, a rare deep-sea species never before seen in this region. In addition, they observed two siphonophores, commonly called flying spaghetti monsters, and based on the images, they truly live up to their nickname. 
A new species of octopus, likely related to Casper, was also spotted, though it hasn't been officially named yet. Moreover, the team captured footage of a squid that is a promising candidate for a new species as well. In total, there are 20 new potential species that could expand our knowledge of marine life. All of this serves as a reminder of how much we still have to discover about our own planet. Less than 30% of the ocean floor has been mapped, despite oceans covering 70% of the Earth's surface. Clearly, there is much more work ahead in exploring the mysteries of the deep.